Hi everyone, this is Lonnie Clark, again Nuts for Art, and I'm going to read, or begin to read, Chapter 3 of this book by Tamplin and Goffman, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. It was written in 1970. So the title of Chapter 3, and I probably won't be able to read a lot tonight because I had a long day. I drove back and forth to Portland and I visited my daughter. It was great, but it's late, so I don't think I'll be able to read very much. But chapter three, beware of the gallant knight of technological pros progress. The presumption is widely made that in some mysterious way a rational approach will be forthcoming that will enable man and his ecosystem to survive environmental degradation. Hmm. With much fanfare, a stern glance is cast upon a particular smokestack, the latrine output at West Point, or an oil slick in the Gulf of Mexico. As a result of the fanfare, it is assumed that a new day of attention to our environmental int integrity has dawned, when in fact, all the irrational approaches of the past are tenaciously defended and all suggestions of a rational future of a rational future approach are slandered and ridiculed as the work of conservationist kooks. Hmm. Sounds like my daughter calling me an extremist. For those who do not understand that our environmental crisis is other than accidental, it is essential to review the nature of technological application of scientific discovery. It is within this general approach to development of technology that all the difficulties lie and the future catastrophes are carefully prepared. Nothing is left to chance. Our approach of the past and unfortunately of the present virtually ensures disastrous ultimate results. So similar are the various technologies in this generation of their respective parts of the environmental crisis that almost any of them could be chosen for illustrative purposes. All such technologies can be regarded as polluters of man himself, of his supporting ecosystems, or of the in inanimate environment. Radiation exposure and the radioactive contamination of the biosphere make up the problem of radiation pollution. An argument could be made for radiation pollution as deserving the number one position among environmental hazards. That's my position. As good an argument can be made that other approaches to extermination of life on this planet preempt this leading position because we won't be around long enough to suffer from radiation destruction. <laughs> What is important about radiation pollution is that its study exemplifies all the errors of the past and the formidable obstacles to reasonable action in the future. The history of the, of, of the automobile would serve as well, but since our area is atomic energy, we shall attempt to outline the general principles which concern us using radi radiation pollution as a framework of specifics. I think I can get through that. The Atomic Energy Commission, a case study. The elements of the problem can be discussed under the following categories. One, a new wondrous, a wondrous new technology is born. Two, a gallant knight champions the new technology. Three, the technology has a byproduct that is a hazard to man. Four, the concept of a tolerance dose of radiation poison is promulgated. Five, the conflict between the gallant knight and his experts and the public. Wow. Huh. The elements of the problem can be discussed under the following categories. Wow. Okay, let's move on. A wondrous new technology is born. 
Röntgen's discovery of the X-ray in 1895 and Becquerel's discovery of natural radioactivity in 1896 are key points in the field of radiation pollution. Any attempt to gainsay the remarkable nature of the phenomena involved would be foolish. Clearly, these discoveries brought a new dimension to chemistry, physics, and biology, a dimension best described in two ways. One, the packet of energy involved is massive compared to the previously familiar infrared, visible, and ultraviolet packets of light energy. <clears throat> Two, atoms, or more precisely, nuclei, undergo transformation where the energy per transformation is as much a million fold or more than that, or more than released, more that released accompanying chemical transformations, e.g., as, or ergo, as in the oxidation of carbon to carbon dioxide. <clears throat> which I didn't understand anything that sentence just said. Atoms, or more precisely nuclei, under, undergo transformation where the energy released per transformation is as much as a million fold or more that release accompanying chemical transformations, e.g. as in oxidation of carbon to carbon dioxide. I guess I need to take some science classes. Okay, man's curiosity in his quest for an ostensibly better life, for an ostensibly better life, inevitably led to a rapid exploration of the possibilities for exploitation of the new discoveries in medicine, in industry, in warfare, and in the furtherance of scientific investigation itself. It would be difficult indeed to find a scientific discovery or technical development where this sequence of events does not occur. Rontigen's X-rays, if anybody knows how to say that word, I don't. Rontgen's, Rontgen's, R-O-E-N-T-G-E-N, -E -E apostrophe S. Rontgen's, Rontgen's, X-rays and the Curie's radium are very rapidly introduced into medical diagnosis and medical therapy. While in retrospect, one may look with horror at the rashness of man in exploring his new technology. History teaches us that such rashness has not shown any signs of abating. In medicine, the frustration over the inability to cope with unsolved major diseases at any point in time is understandable, even if it leaves one's, one shaking his head at the readiness with which almost anything new is tried. Here we see the introduction of the cult of worship of technological progress, of the scientific method, with the undying confidence that science and technology are progress. More progress is up, and up is by definition good. There is always the assurance that the new technology must be wonderful, that any appearance otherwise is but an indication that we have not yet learned how best to extract the full measure of wonders the, technolo the technology or new scientific discovery has to offer. And even before this is learned, if indeed there is to be, there it is to be learned, the good is up philosophy leads to a rapid expansion of science and its technology. So that's page 30, you guys, and I think I'm going to stop because I need to sleep and I have to work all day tomorrow. So ciao, you guys. Uh, I'll read more tomorrow night and um, sweet dreams. Think positively.